Hello everyone and welcome to Zephy Productions. This is a review of the Nikon Z 50mm f 1.8s lens and I think it's an outstanding lens. Hi Richard and welcome to Zephy Productions and this is the review of the 50mm f 1.8s lens. And before we start, let's take a look at some photos. I have done 9 photo shoots with it. Let me share with you some photos that I have from this lens itself. I think you have seen the photos and overall I think this lens is an outstanding lens and today's review is really to tell you guys what's so great about this lens and really it is extremely worth to get if you are a Nikon Z user and you are into portraiture and you like 50mm itself. Now I want to start first by saying that 50mm is not a new focal length to me even though I always say that I like the 85mm uh, stuff but uh, I purchased a lot of 50mm lens in my lifetime. So this is the Nikon Z 50mm, this is the GFX 63 which is a 50mm equivalent. This is the Sony's 50mm f1.2, I also own the 50mm f1.2 RF before I sold it away because I at one point in time decided to shoot less RF and I sold it away. But overall I use a lot of 50mm and I think this is one of the very good ones and at a very affordable price. So let's take a look step by step at the different parts of this lens and share you my thoughts of it. First, let's talk about build quality. To make it very simple and short, this is the S-Line lens. It is professionally built, made of metal and polycarbonate. Uh, the only thing is that it's a very simple one. It only has one AF-MF switch and a focusing ring. No other buttons, no LCD panels. It has a weather gasket behind. You can see here, there's a weather gasket. And this is to denote that this is a weather sealed lens. I have shot it in drizzles before. It works out well, no complaints. Now, this lens has a focusing ring, but it's a focused by wire lens like or mirrorless lens so it has no hard stops as you can see here I'm spinning lens infinitely. Overall this lens is quite nice I mean it weighs 415 gram quite light um, considering you no know, anyway by the way this size looks very big for 51.8 but if you put in a perspective just to show you guys this is the 63 f2.8 so if you equate the full frame is like something like 15 millimeters f2 uh, the size about the same so if you are having good optics you will require certain size and this lens seems to be quite aligned with the GFX one. Um, 415 gram not heavy too, oh, overall I think this is a nice build, nice size and considering it's S-line, I don't think you have to worry using in adverse weather. Now one last thing is that there's a hood and this is a friction type of hood, yes screws in and lock up. Uh, I do prefer hoods with buttons to unlock it because I don't like this type, sometimes it just gets dislodged halfway and it creates vignetting but overall I don't think there's a much issue to it. Okay, now that is of course uh, when it comes to build quality. Next, let's talk about its image stabilization. Or oh, it doesn't have one. So image stabilization is provided by the Z9. Overall, the performance is pretty good. At one time of a shutter, you get eight usable, two a little bit soft shots. And if you are doing real world portraiture, as I did here, you know, I shot most of my portraits in that particular shoot at one twenty of a shutter, no issues. Um, every two shots, one will be tech sharp, the other will be a bit soft, but very usable in the night shoot itself. I don't have complaints, so overall I think this lens is quite stable when used with the Nikon Z9. Now next I talk about autofocus and uh, this is a portrait lens to me, 15mm, not a sports lens. Uh, so mainly I would just say that for the purpose of portrait, it works out well. I did some spinning shots, jumping shots, pretty much okay, um, pretty sharp, you know, and 15mm by the way is still quite shallow at 1.8. So if it's off, you can tell, but I can tell you that, you know, with this shot here, I zoom in 100%, very sharp and it's a spinning shot. So that is all for autofocus. Overall, I think autofocus is fast, accurate and pretty good for the purpose of portraiture itself. Next, I'll talk about um, image quality. And image quality wise, this 15mm is outstanding. Now, I have used many 15mm in my lifetime. The, those I kept here is one of the best ones. And I think this guy is right up there with them, with them at a very low price. Now, this lens in terms of optics is sharp in the center sharp at the side, maybe at the very very side, not that sharp, it lose a bit of sharpness there, but overall I still think it's very usable. 
Now, if you want to say comparison to, like, say, the 50mm f1.2 GM, this you know, Sony lens here, then yes, uh, the, the Sony is sharper, but the Sony costs five times more. And it's only sharper when you look at 200%, so I'm not going to sweat over it. And in the day shot, I didn't notice any uh, chromatic aberration, uh, at least for the building itself, so I think it works out pretty well. Now, one thing I did note that is that the lens do vignette quite a bit. So you can see here, this is f1.8. I stopped on f2.8, or is it 2.5? It is very different. So there is quite some vignetting with this lens, and the Z9 don't seem to auto-correct it, so there's something to note with this 1.8 itself. So uh, that is, of course, for daytime. So for nighttime-wise, I tried out also. Um, overall, the chromatic aberration for nighttime when you're shooting in very bright light tubes, which I always use to test, seems pretty okay. Uh, there is some slight bluish tint, but very slight, not a big deal. Uh, but the lens do glow just a little. I mean, there are sterile lenses out there, like the 85 1.2 uh, RF, but this is not the sterile lens. There is some slight glow. Very similar to what I noticed in the 85 1.8 no, S Line 2. Uh, but it is actually slightly more corrected, if you ask me. Now, at the edge, at the side, you will notice that the lights have some funny fan-like shape. So that's talking about coma, and these lens do have them. So if you are shooting like stars and stuff, all your point light at the side would have weird shapes. There's something to note out of this 50mm f1.8. Uh, next, I'll talk about is Sunstar. This is a 9 aperture bit, so you get an 18 point Sunstar. Uh, I'm not very sure how good or bad a Sunstar is, so I shall not comment on it. Uh, and lastly, we talk about the bokeh balls. So the bokeh balls is relatively smooth throughout, no significant ringing and no significant edge. But I did notice for some reason when I was testing this lens, maybe uh, I was not doing it properly or maybe because it's electronic shutter. But I did notice the ball is not perfectly round. Notice the center ball, not perfectly round. Just some slight edge here and there. Now this is of course a very extreme scenario because in real world, the bokeh of this lens is really good. In fact, let's talk about some real world photos with this lens. Now, in terms of real-world photos, I would say that this lens is sharp anywhere in the frame I need it to be. I have shot subjects in the center, at the side, in studio, out of studio, so I shot a different aperture value too. So let's first talk about in-studio one, because that's very simple. I would say that this lens is outstandingly sharp. In the studio, I don't think you worry about sharpness at all, at f5.6, f4, f8, very tech sharp throughout the entire frame. I think you just use it as it is. Now, studio is not exciting to talk about. Let's talk about outdoors, because this is a 1.8 lens, you expect to look at bokeh. And sharpness outdoor too, wide open. So let's take a look at some of these photos here. Now, wide open, I will say as it's sharp in the center, sharp off center. For purpose of portraiture, you will probably never place a subject all the way to the corner, so I don't have such shots too. But I will say as center, off center, sharp. And you notice also so far that the bokeh is really pleasing. And I will say as this lens has one of the nicer bokehs I noticed. How do I rate a uh, niceness of a bokeh, you may be wondering. Why do I think this lens is actually slightly better than other lens? And that is, you look at the places where there's like foliage, the trees and stuff. This lens actually blends quite nicely. <laughs> I can show you some of the photos here. It really blends quite nicely, all the trees, the foliage, the leaves. Um, normally these are very crazy in most other lens. Even with like 1.2 lenses, sometimes you can see weird shapes and outlines. I notice this lens just blends it very nicely. So, um, this is probably one of the nicer bokeh lens, even though it's a 1.8. It's actually one of the smoother ones with very nice blending of lines when it comes to foliages and places which are traditionally sometimes very busy, even at the cons themselves. So overall, how do I feel about this lens? Now, I have shot, as I said, nine photo shoots with it, indoors, outdoors, various conditions, at the beach, <laughs> in the park, whatever it is. I think this lens is a solid 50mm lens. In fact, for this price in Singapore, which is 700 plus, I purchased this second hand at like 500 Sing dollars. 500 Sing dollars, if you convert it to US, that is around 400 USD or slightly less, a 300 plus USD. It is a solid, solid lens for its price. In fact, let me put its US price here. I think it's very affordable compared to, let's like, say, the 51.2 GM of the 51.2 Nikon lens. Uh, yes, those lens may be better, but it costs so much more. Uh, this image quality is something I expect out of high-end 1.2 lenses. And for the first time, this is a sub-$1,000 lens that is providing that kind of quality, the kind of controlled sharpness, very little chromatic aberration, very little problem, relatively pleasing bokeh. 
all with a price of less than a thousand sing. Now, <laughs> the only complaint I have is that it's not a 1.2, but you know, I know that Nikon has a 1.2 and it weighs like three times more and costs, I think, four times the price. So I, have, I don't really have much complaint other than that. No, this is a fantastic lens and I foresee myself to be using this lens way more often than I use other 50 millimeters. Overall, if you are in the Nikon system, buying a 50 millimeter lens, this should be the 50 millimeter you buy. Definitely better than the Sigma, definitely better than any other 50 millimeter lens on the Nikon system at least. Um, I totally have no complaints. This lens may in fact be better than even the 50 millimeters f1.2 RF. That's how I feel about it. Of course, not as good as the Sony one. Sony is even more updated. Can't beat the GFX one. <laughs> but no, at half the price of the GFX lens, one fifth the price of the Sony lens, I think you should not complain too much. I think this is a fantastic lens. Outstanding. Overall, the Nikon has made me quite a happy guy. Um, no complaints on it. Other than the body is a little bit on the heavy side. But um, I hope you enjoyed this review <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.